Hey guys, welcome back to World Mechanics. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. If you guys have a Jeep Cherokee, Jeep Compass, Jeep Renegade with a 2.4 multi-air engine, guys, and you're trying to figure out how to remove cylinder head or how to remove and replace cylinder head gasket, stay with us and we're going to cover that today. Now, as you can see, the engine is out of the car, but practically you do not have to remove it, guys. Why we remove the engine? Because We'll be making at least probably close to 100 videos on that engine and we want to show you how to remove and replace almost everything on it. And in order to do that guys, we have to get it out so we can show you with a great detail where every bolt is located, how to remove every component because if it's in the vehicle, it's practically impossible to give you a good uh, detailed view guys. So stay with us, that's what we'll be doing. That's, uh, that engine is used on multiple Dodge vehicle, uh, vehicles, Chrysler, Fiat and Jeep as well. In addition, every car we get at the shop, we'll be making at least 200 videos, guys. Our mission is to save you as much money as we can. So please subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video. Let's start on it now. So if the engine is in the vehicle, guys, uh, when you open the hood, okay, you're going to face it that way. So everything that we'll be doing on the left side. So stay with us and we'll show you what to do now. So guys, let me explain quick, okay. If the engine is in the vehicle, you face it that way when you open the hood. Right here you have the air filter box, so stay with us, we'll explain what you need to do. First, you need to remove your uh, engine cover, just pull it straight up. Okay, it has four rubber bushings that it attaches to. One, two, three, four, and those guys, they attach to the, uh, to the valve cover. Let us, uh, let us explain you where now, guys. Okay, you can see one, two, three, four and we'll show you guys what you need to do now so right here you have the air filter box guys this is the uh, hose for the intake okay and you need to get that hose clamp loose and once you get it loose uh, you can go ahead and pull the uh, the hose out okay you just unscrew it with a flathead screwdriver like this one here okay we'll need to do one more on this side on the throttle body okay check it out just get it loose there as well now this is the intake temperature sensor remove that one as well let me go on the other side so i can show you a little bit better where things are a little bit limited room here guys you're going to have one clip that clip will look like the clip right here but it's broken you go with the clip removal tool underneath and you pull that clip out then you have a 10 millimeter bolt holding right there go ahead and remove it guys okay like that and you can grab that piece and pull it up so you can see that's some of the first steps about removing the uh, valve cover okay to remove that valve cover out of the engine now guys next you can see where your engine uh, engine cover attaches on top okay this thing will need to come out okay like that just unscrew it right here do not lose that thing guys very important not to lose it so next right here you can see we need to disconnect okay that clamp okay push down on it perfect like that remove that nut 10 millimeter now this is your camshaft position sensor disconnect it okay press okay that thing how is this broken that brown thing you need to uh, push it up then you're going to press here and pull it out okay like that and that uh, uh, that uh, coolant pipe actually attaches to the coolant reservoir right here it says bottle check it out so one clamp remove it okay and you can go ahead and pull it out or you just pull it out of the engine and you flip it on the side guys what else we need to do quite a bit of work here now guys we need to disconnect our wiring harness and now the interesting part is here because we will need to start taking things apart and first we need to remove the ignition coils okay let me focus quick here that red thing press it back push down now right here and disconnect the coils one by one Perfect, this one is out too, just press, disconnect them. Okay, and we can go ahead and remove the ignition coils now with a 10 millimeter socket that we will need to do, guys. And you can see each of the ignition coils, it has one bolt that we need to remove.
Perfect. Next. Grab them, pull them out, guys. Okay. We dropped our, one of our boats. So pick it up if you do that. Leave your spark plugs in because if you drop anything, you can pull it out later. Otherwise, it's going to end up in the engine. You can see how deep that hole is. Unbelievable. Next, guys. We have a few more things to do here. We will disconnect the wiring harness now. Okay, you're going to have clips, guys, plastic clips like this one here, and you remove them with a uh, with a clip remover tool. Go underneath, okay, underneath right here. When you get it loose, right there, that way you will not break it, guys. Okay, because somebody already broke it. The one here, and you're going to have one right there. You see, this is broken. This one is good. So if you can go underneath, go ahead and pull them that way. Perfect. Here, guys, we have one sensor that we need to disconnect. Okay, like that. Okay, you can check it out. PCV holes on the back side there. Disconnect it as well. Okay, great. Now, let's see what else we need to do here in order guys to be able to pull that uh, valve cover out everything else should be good there eight millimeter socket and we start removing both guys get them loose you will not be able to pull them out some may come out but you actually have to keep them on the cylinder head and we'll explain later how to replace them as well if you need to buy a new gasket we'll have guys the link in the description of the video below so check it out okay where we get ours from Okay, I'm trying to show you where all the bolts are to follow the action. Perfect. Right here in the middle we have four more that are hidden. That impact is amazing guys. We have it listed in the description of the video below in case you want to get one. Saves you so much time. Perfect. Now, that gasket might be stuck, guys, so you might need to pry here a little bit with a screwdriver. Okay, just careful if it's not coming out, probably something's still holding. Okay. A little bit in the back, it's holding. So, let's pry a little bit there. One more bolt, I told you guys. If it may be stuck, okay, it may be stuck, but if it's not coming, okay, loose after you pry it a little bit. Don't focus it, guys. Okay, let's see if anything else is holding. Maybe we have a bolt that is not loose all the way. Yep, one in the corner right there. Once we remove it, I'll show you where all the bolts are as well. okay we get it out let me show you where all the bolts are this is the front of the engine one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen guys okay I remember 15 16 17 18 19 20 bolts and this is guys the valve cover every time you remove it it's recommended to replace the gaskets and don't forget to replace the one in the middle here for the spark plugs as well Next we'll bring the engine to TDC, top dead center point, ok this is TDC mark here and you have one mark on the inside of the crankshaft pulley, it's ok right there it's coming, you can see it oh, right there, that's TDC point guys and we're ready to go now. So with 10mm guys we're going to get uh, the three bolts, ok, three bolts for the, uh, for the water pump loose that way we can remove the pulley later because uh, we we'll need to remove that one so we can uh, remove the timing cover so we'll need to remove the serpentine belt for the next step this is your tensioner pulley 16 millimeter socket or 5 8 works as well go ahead counterclockwise okay and pull the belt out the only way you can pull it out from is the idle pulley and you can completely remove the belt. I'll definitely recommend to buy a new belt now. If you want to see you guys where we get our parts from, check out the link in the description of the video below. Fast shipping, good price, so I'll definitely recommend it. Next guys, it's really hard to remove that bolt. Okay, and I'll show you what we use, something that's not very expensive. People will buy super expensive air compressors and things like that. 
we use that 6 gallon pancake compressor by DeWalt you can see how little it is but that thing is super powerful it goes to 165 psi this is unbelievable guys 165 and right now it's it stopped at 170 so even when a little bit more uh, it's a 6 gallon tank but it's enough guys to do the impact for uh, probably 30 to 40 seconds so that's definitely enough time to uh, to remove the board we'll show you how powerful it is in addition we use an Ingersoll rent okay Ingersoll rent impact those are amazing they come in different colors as well this is super powerful guys impact so 22 millimeter socket and we'll show you how it takes just a couple seconds okay to remove that bolt now okay perfect now you can see it just took us a couple of seconds okay to do that in no time as you can see guys our tdc moved a little bit so what we're going to do okay we're going to bring it back to tdc mark again okay perfect just like that now we can go ahead and grab the pulley it's a key pulley and remove it you don't need to worry about anything else okay and you can see it came out of the way now so next we're going to remove the pulley for the water pump perfect with that out of the way okay we're getting closer and closer we need to remove this pulley and that pulley there as well uh, there is a little bit of difference one is reverse threaded the bottom one is going counterclockwise to get it loose this is the idle pulley the tensioner pulley you need to go clockwise to get it loose this is because due to the fact that it's reverse threaded so by going counterclockwise to install the belt or remove the belt you will not get the board loose so this one okay uh, this one is 16 millimeter okay right there perfect you can see reverse threaded guys got it out on the bottom of the engine we have uh, this is the oil pan we have four bolts that we need to remove one we got them loose guys so we don't have to waste your time three and the last one is a 12 millimeter okay this one there those are out now we have a few more bolts that we need to remove here we'll show you what i'm talking about okay we we'll need to remove guys the bracket for the AC compressor on the bottom you don't have to remove the AC compressor okay just one bolt here and a few bolts underneath okay I will show you where they are located uh, this one is too long okay and we have one more i think perfect almost coming out now okay great this one came out now let's see if we have a hidden bolt here well right right there we just have one more that we need to remove so we'll just go ahead and remove it now perfect we can go ahead and start removing the timing cover now 10 millimeter socket first guys millimeter now okay this is a bigger one looks like those are this is 13 
and the other ones are either 14 or 15 millimeters 15 for more it looks like maybe okay yep 15 millimeter perfect now guys you have to be extremely careful how you remove that thing because you can crack it there is two guides okay one here one over there so gently pry guys if you pry a little bit too much that thing can crack in no time we broke a, a couple in the past from not being careful so we were in our mistake guys from our mistake and now we go very slow okay this one came out easy this is all the silicone now uh, when you're ready to reseal we guys will show you what we use what we clean it with and all that stuff will be listed in the description of the video below we'll have the links for your convenience we use a scraper like that okay and usually okay we're going to clean all the silicone you clean it really good clean it with brake cleaner after that clean your uh, engine block make sure things don't go in the open and this is guys actually the gray silicone we like we like it even better than the red one and it's ultra gray maximum torque we've used that one so for so long and we haven't had any problems with it it seals really good so after you remove guys the valve cover timing cover we can continue uh, with the next step We'll show you what we need to do. Remember, I said the engine needs to be a TDC, top dead center. Make sure you verify that. And we can continue now with disconnecting a few wires for the timing control. And also, uh, also known as the brick, guys, right here. It's that thing that controls the intake valves. We'll need to remove that one. So how you disconnect it, that yellow piece, okay. Uh, you push it back and then you press down there and you pull it out it gets stuck guys sometimes that thing will get stuck big time okay so make sure you get it out a couple right there we have right here as well trying to see which one's better i think it's better with the light so you can see how things are doing here okay don't pull for the wires guys grab for the the okay for the pork and pull out because otherwise okay you can damage things guys this one's out we lost our yellow thing here so we need to pick it up later so careful not to pry them too much you have four control solenoids that you need to do that too and after that guys okay this is your uh, variable timing control right here guys this bolt right here and the bolt over there those will be the last bolts to remove because they have the guides and hold things in place so six millimeter allen wrench all the tools and parts again guys that we use you can find the links in the description of the video below for your convenience Okay, that bolt there now. Okay, this one. Get it loose. Now the one right here. You have two metal guides. Careful not to drop those. Those things can fall in the engine now, guys. And if they do, you have to remove the open and more stuff to find them. Otherwise, it could be catastrophic. So careful, guys. Okay, here we have a metal guide. okay right there those sometimes they get loose and they will fall off check it out so be careful and one over there this is the gasket every time it's recommended to uh, get a new gasket we have guys the link again in the description of the video below next we will need to disconnect the vacuum pump brake pump here so those two red things spread them up a little bit pull it and then you just grab and pull it out we have three bolts that we need to remove you will have two seals on the inside so make sure that they will come out to big a big o-ring or a small o-ring okay we grab it guys this is the brake uh, vacuum pump right here this is the big o-ring this is the little one sometimes the little one will stack get stuck there so uh, be careful now we can continue with the next step 
uh, removing okay we need to remove the timing chain so we can go ahead and release that so this is the tensioner now guys top dead center this is the timing chain tensioner 10 millimeters okay perfect and we can pull that thing out great now in order to remove the chain now guys okay what we need to do okay we need to remove that timing chain guide right here and the uh, we need to remove also the timing chain tensioner arm this is 13 millimeter socket there's a bushing that comes with okay on the bottom make sure that you don't lose it after that we'll remove the timing chain guide 10 millimeter socket three bolts that we need to remove okay you can see perfect now unfortunately guys you will not be able to just grab the chain and pull it out it's a short chain this is actually a good design but because you cannot uh, jump the timing it's so easy but you have to remove the bolt for the camshaft now so you can remove the pulley with the chain perfect now you grab it gently twist it a little bit back and forth and it comes out okay and we're ready to continue with the next step now so as you can see guys okay now we need to remove these bolts in order to remove the camshaft and what we need to do now guys okay right here now uh, we have uh, you can see they're numbered e1 okay e2 e3 e4 first and last one you cannot confuse them all the arrows point towards the timing chain so we start removing those with 10 millimeter socket now so you can see they start coming out guys it's important to organize those and not to uh, damage them not to get them covered in dust sand keep them clean wipe them before we install them guys we have the installation video as well on the channel putting the engine together so you can see there what needs to be done to you guys 12 millimeter socket last two bolts here perfect now we grab them guys and we organize them in the same order we're going to transfer them to that towel there and that way we'll keep them in order and keep them clean as well okay perfect you can see just like that and we can pull the camshaft guys now out of there as well okay just like that so next guys in order to remove the cylinder head guys and the gasket we will need to remove the exhaust manifold with the catalytic converter the whole assembly so we are going to go ahead and show you that and after that we'll continue with the next scene and show you what needs to be done once we remove the exhaust because without exhaust you cannot remove it you either need to uh, well in every case you need to remove the exhaust because it attaches to the engine block on the bottom and that way uh, it can come out otherwise you will not be able to pull it out so let's do that and we'll continue we had to remove the engine out of the car as i said because we'll be doing quite a bit of work but usually the exhaust guys on the bottom side okay on the bottom side uh, where it attaches to the exhaust of the car the catalytic converter this is the down pipe guys okay and you will have only two bolts and two nuts that you need to remove right here so do that guys super simple you just remove them lay underneath the vehicle and get them loose if they don't come out guys i will recommend to use penetrating spray uh, rust penetrating spray and soak them overnight and then you can guys go ahead and do that after that we're going to remove the engine cover guys so we can show you with a greater detail where things are so grab it pull it straight out okay you have only four clips now holding here guys one two three four okay right here and those okay let me show you where they attach guys okay they attach right here you can see perfect now this is your exhaust manifold catalytic converter all that comes in one piece so in order to replace the catalytic converter you have to remove the whole exhaust manifold and vice versa so you need to remove guys okay that uh, plate okay that uh, thermal shield 
and this one will be super hot if you drove the car so always work on the exhaust uh, after you park the car for at least 12 hours so everything can be cold we'll need to remove that uh, thermo shield up and with the oxygen sensor here uh, we won't be able to so we need to disconnect it guys right there is the connector on the back side okay you press in you pull it out and now guys how you remove oxygen sensor there is a special socket and all the tools and parts that we use in our videos guys you can check out in the description of the video below we'll have the links if you need to buy a new uh, catalytic converter all that will be on the channel so check it out guys so we get here install our ratchet or extension if you need to okay and get it loose and you can see not very complicated at all after that just start turning it by hand guys next what we need to do we already removed that one once so we can learn how to do it and show you the correct way so things are a little bit loose otherwise you may expect them to be a little bit tight uh, spray those nuts too with rust penetrating spray okay not here here and here because otherwise okay if they're old or high of mileage they may break okay that happened in the past before as well here we have one bolt with a 10 millimeter okay that we need to remove okay you can see that's holding the plate towards the catalytic converter there okay right there so go ahead pull that one out and there is a hidden bracket that we'll need to remove as well but i will not be able to show you okay how to do that until we remove it you're supposed to have one or more of those but ours is broken guys okay one is missing so one two then on top you have three more nuts okay and then we just have third one right there have to use a wrench otherwise you may not be able to reach perfect and we'll be able guys okay to pull it out now just grab it and pull it out up and out so next you have that plate that's holding the catalytic converter towards the engine block we already removed it guys but i'll show you once we removed it otherwise it's impossible for me to show you exactly where that thing is located guys so now we got all the bolts loose so we don't have to waste your time but let me let us show you where all the bolts are okay one bolt here perfect bolt there there one in the middle as well check it out one on the side those are the bolts guys and now we just have two nuts okay that we need to remove these two nuts are 14 millimeter nuts guys in each top corner left and right perfect but before that you have to remove that plate remember the one i told you about on the bottom perfect after that all we have to do just grab that catalytic converter exhaust manifold and pull it out lift it up and ah one uh, the other oxygen sensor we didn't disconnect it so press down there and pull it out we almost forgot about this thing perfect now we grab it we pull it out let us show you where that plate is now on the bottom okay that plate guys it attaches okay it attaches like that to the catalytic okay let me see uh yep it, like that to the catalytic converter here on the bottom so you have to remove these two bolts okay i removed the whole plate so i can show you because otherwise i cannot get under the engine but these two bolts right here remove them and then remove the ones on top and you can pull it out and you can see this one came out okay just like that so next step after we remove the exhaust manifold we'll need to disconnect the fuel line this is super dangerous job guys make sure the engine is not hot uh, but if you get to that point probably it could already but make sure that you don't have hot exhaust open flame open spark anything guys because you can catch on fire this is your fuel pressure line and this fuel line guys is under pressure guys so you will leak some fuel out, out no matter what 
Now the other thing, it's going to spray so it can get in your eyes, get on your skin, so be very careful guys not to catch yourself on fire and not to uh, damage your vision or uh, get it on your skin because it will spray. So if you're not guys uh, confident doing that and you don't have any experience, do not do it uh, because uh, I don't want to be blamed for that. So consider that entertaining video and not a how-to video. So we're going to go ahead, open that bracket here that holds the uh, fuel line and the uh, uh, the line for the perch valve right there now that blue thing this is a safety lock so we need to go ahead and gently lift it up with the screwdriver okay like that now you grab the line and you push it all the way in and then you press on the white thing and you start pulling it out it will start getting loose and it may spray fuel ours will not because it just cut so we leaked everything out now next guys we need to disconnect right here we need to disconnect our purge valve so you can see those two green things we need to press in okay like that and pull it out this one is out as well what we need to do now we need to remove that foam piece okay so it can get out of the way and we can disconnect okay more wires now here so now we need to disconnect the fuel injectors you can see those red things that's a safety pin that you need to push up gently with the screwdriver okay now press here and pull it out okay you can see right there you press in and it moves the clip and you pull it out we do the same to the other three we need to disconnect the purge valve right here that white thing slide it back press here towards the back disconnect it but the valves disconnected to you guys and now let's go ahead and remove the other two injector wires now we need to remove all the wiring harness here guys that attaches to the intake manifold we need to disconnect this is the uh, this is the wire for the mass uh, map sensor the pressure manifold pressure sensor okay this one looks like it's loose on this side from that side we'll need to uh, disconnect it from the okay let me come on this side now this is the throttle body right here guys we need to disconnect that wire slide the red thing back push down pull it out okay here this is the starter wire guys go ahead grab it okay right here we have one more pull it out here guys we have the uh, wire for the coolant temperature sensor that red thing you need to slide it up okay it does get stuck now right here there is one little place where you press in okay and you disconnect it i'm talking about okay that clip right here press in it moves the clip and we disconnect it now let me show you okay what else we need to do from that point guys uh, before we even start working on the engine you have to have your car battery disconnected why because you you'll be removing now the alternator wires you're working close to the starter on the intake so you don't want to touch the positive wires from the battery because you can catch your car on fire you can guys burn your computer you short things out so we need to disconnect the wires from the alternator now okay right here open that cap 13 millimeter here and we need to get that nut loose perfect this is a positive wire from the battery so if you do not have your battery disconnected and you touch guys okay you you touch that wire somewhere what is going to happen you're going to see sparks flying you can uh, short your computer out you can catch your car on fire you can burn fuses that would be the best scenario to burn a fuse one red thing you slide back and this is the the second wire for the alternator that you disconnect we need to disconnect the wires for the ac compressor okay they have two places where they're supposed to hold one is here okay and one is over there we already pre-loosened those earlier so that way we can do that a little bit faster and we have one wire for a ground wire for the engine there with a 13 millimeter socket again this is with a bolt
Okay, and we can get that thing out. Perfect. Now, let's see what else we need to do. Next, on the bottom of the intake, guys. Okay, there is one bolt that we need to remove right there for the bracket. Perfect, we get that one out, that way the intake can slide up. Okay, let's see if we have anything else here holding or this should be guys uh, ready for the cylinder head bolts removal now, I think. We don't have anything else. Now we're ready to remove guys the cylinder head. Most people never think that it matters how you remove it, it does because otherwise you can wrap your cylinder head guys, you can make it uneven. As you know, there is a special sequence and torque uh, to install it. Kind of the same thing applies to removing it, but in reverse order. Uh, we need to start work our uh, way outside and go towards the inside. And first we're going to loosen each bolt by 90 degrees, guys. Okay, 90 degrees each bolt. We have a torque socket there, if you need one. Okay, all the tools and parts will be in the description of the video below, guys. Okay, 90 degrees, perfect. Now let me hold that engine a little bit because it may try to move, okay. So we go right there in the corner now. We might want to get the pipe for that thing because it's super tight. It may be just a little bit easier if we use the pipe. Okay, because otherwise that thing guys will be tight, I guarantee you that. degrees on this bolt then we come back okay we're going to do the other bolt there in the corner okay we're going to drop the engine I think so we have to be careful if it's in the car it's even a little bit more convenient now we have one more there, in that corner. Perfect. We're gonna start going towards the middle now. Okay, things start to get looser probably now. Okay, no, no, that's not straight, so we're going to mess it up. You have to be careful, guys, how you hold it. No, 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 no. You have to hold your wrench good, because otherwise you're going to strip them. You have to hold with one hand while you're removing it. Okay, perfect. This one is getting out. Okay, let's see this one now. Okay, we need to go ahead and uh, let me screw the engine a little bit because it's gonna fall off the cherry picker. Okay, so we're going to Scoot it back a little bit. Okay. This one's getting loose too. We just have three more, I think. After that, 
we should be almost done. You rarely see a cylinder head that tight. I don't know why this thing is so, so tight. Oh, it's a 2.4 as well, so. Ninety degrees on those, and we'll be ready, guys. Perfect. Now we need to go 180 degrees on each boat again. Go in the same sequence. Start from the outside, go in a cross pattern towards the inside. 180. That's half a revolution. Perfect. Past 180. Even past 90, they just get loose. Okay. This guy was still holding a little bit there. Okay, now we can just go ahead and remove them from that point on, it doesn't matter the sequence and uh, that way you remove them. Now we can go ahead and grab that cylinder head guys Okay, and we need to make a space where we're going to put it so we don't damage it uh, It needs to be on something soft because otherwise you can scratch it and that could be catastrophic You either have to have it resurfaced or you will have to guys Get a new head depending how bad it is but most of the times if it's uh, minor scratches you can resurface them Take it to the machine shop but all that costs money guys So here okay let's see what we have here now all the wiring harness will go on this side we have one hose from the total body that we're going to pull out this is for the brake line vacuum brake line Uh, on this side guys, okay, where the thermostat is, you should have your hoses disconnected, two hoses. Okay, three hoses. This one here, this one is broken ours. That hose there and this hose. This is going to the heater core, these two. So you have to have those disconnected before. Uh, so after that, you can grab it. Okay, and pull it up and get it out. You may want to remove the bolt so that way to ensure that they're not getting caught there. So from that point on, we can grab it. Okay, you have one guy on this side that is getting caught a little bit. Oh, no, this is the hose, guys. We forgot one hose that attaches to the thermostat. This is from the water pump. Good thing, guys, you're watching the video so you know what to do. That hose with the eight millimeter socket right there on the bottom left corner of the thermostat, that hose needs to be removed. Okay, the, the bolt that holds the hose clamp. You can see that clamp I'm talking about. This one, okay, right there. So if that is not removed, guys, uh, the cylinder head will not come out and you don't want to damage that pipe because it's uh, coming from the water pump assembly on the back side so you want to avoid that 8 millimeter socket and we'll go ahead and remove it now get it loose no nope, we're not in we're not doing anything right now okay now it's getting loose so 
So it's a good thing guys to watch the video so you kind of know what is happening, what mistakes not to make and that way you can prevent some things that can cost you hundreds of dollars, sensors, cables, things like that on modern vehicles are really expensive so by doing that guys you will know what mistakes not to make because we will already make some of them. Go ahead, pull it guys, remove it, this is the cylinder head guys and the gasket now is ready to come out as well nothing else holding it this is this is it right there you can see it just like that so that's how you remove it so that's how you guys remove the cylinder head cylinder head gasket and all that uh, putting it together in installation torque specs all that will be on the channel guys we'll have the video hopefully the video will be helpful if you need to buy a new cylinder uh, head gasket guys and bolts we will have the link in the description of the video below in addition we have a video that explains how to clean your cylinder head and prepare it for a new gasket this is something very important that most people will not do so make sure guys okay make sure that uh, you subscribe to the channel and we'll have that video as well if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you guys next time.